Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. This is a continuation of the video series where I'm taking a single RAW file and I'm processing it in multiple applications. My goal is to try to show you an apples to apples comparison of these different applications. Now this is the RAW file we're talking about. And in previous videos, I processed it here in PhotoLab 4. Here's what I re my results from On One Photo Raw 2021. Here's Exposure X6. Here is Capture One version 21. And to begin the series off, I processed that raw file in Lightroom Classic. And that's what I ended up with in Lightroom Classic. Today, we're gonna take that raw file and we're gonna process it in Luminar AI. Now, in the description below this video is a link to this raw file. You could download it for free and mess around with it in whatever application you use to see what you come up with. Now, as far as my philosophy, I'll, my post-processing philosophy as it pertains to this specific file, I'm gonna do pretty much exactly the same thing. First of all, as I mentioned previously, I like to start out with cropping. I like to crop the uh, image early in my workflow, but in this case, I'm really happy with what I captured in camera, so I'm not going to do any cropping. Next, I like to do white balance, but I think white balance is fine as well. So I'm just going to go to the next uh, steps I would do. First of all, in Luminar AI, kind of unique to Luminar AI is Enhance AI, and I'm gonna use that. I'm going to move the accent to the right, and you can see how it reigns in the highlights a little bit and opens up the shadows a little bit. I'll move Sky Enhancer to the right a touch as well. Uh, next, I'll jump down to the light tab and uh, with light, I'm happy with the profile, so I'm not going to do anything there. And just looking at the image, it looks like shadows are relatively dark. So we'll open up the shadows a bit. We'll bring down highlights, see what we do there. Uh, next, I'll go to the blacks and whites, so I'll open that up. And to get a white and black point, what you can do is tap the J key on your keyboard, J for Jack. And when you do that, you'll get uh, clipping indicators and you can see that I'm clipping the highlights around the sun. So I could move the white slider down or up to see if I could try to move that or affect that. And actually I'm not worried too much about clipping those highlights. I could try to bring whites down, the highlights down, I'm sorry. And maybe I'll do that. And I'm really not worried about much of that tiny little bit of clipping there. Now you, you could see a little bit on the beach there's a tiny bit of blue, that's where I'm clipping the shadows. And if I take now the blue slider and I move it to left, you'll begin to see a lot more blue come into the image. So I'm clipping those. Now I don't mind clipping the shadows too much, I mentioned that numerous times. So I'm gonna leave it probably right about there. Then I'm going to turn off the clipping indicators by tapping on the J key again to turn those off. So. I'm happy with the white and black point. Um, I'm not gonna do anything with contrast right now. I think so far it looks contrasty enough. So I'm not going to do anything there. I am going to jump down to color and then I'm gonna to go to the HSL section of this tab. And I'm gonna do again the same things I've done in previous videos. I'm gonna to go to saturation and I'm going to take yellow and I'm gonna increase the saturation of yellow, increase the saturation of orange. Then I'm going to go to luminance and I'm going to bring down the luminosity of orange. Same thing with yellow, and bring down the luminosity of blue as well. So, so far, so good. So, I've done tone, and I've done color. Next I would do, um, well, before that even, I kind of left it out. Around the time I'm doing tone, I would also do noise reduction. But as I mentioned previously, this is shot at a very low ISO. And if you download this image, you'll see there's really no noise in it at all. So I'm not going to worry about any noise reduction uh, on this image. But I am going to go to details. And I like working the detail sliders from the bottom up. Um, I go with large detail first, move that to the right. And you can see it's having a little effect on this image, not too much. It's not really a lot of large detail here. Go to medium detail, and this is probably the one that's going to give me what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna move it up just a little. It's a landscape image, so I'm not really too concerned about making it like so sharp that it looks, you know, incredibly, I don't know, like a macro image or something like that. But I do wanna see some detail where this wave is breaking. I think that's interesting, so I wanna see that. So I kinda like that. I could go to the sharpen slider as well right here, but. 
I don't think I even need to move that too much. So that's fine. So I'm pretty much got it looking like I want it to look. I might jump back to color a little bit um, too and go to the saturation slider and move that uh, to the right. Maybe not that much, just a little bit. And then go revisit the uh, HSL section as well and go to the saturation. And I want to bring the yellow down a little bit and bring the orange up a little more. So a little more like that. I seem to remember it looking more like that when I was there. So that's good. So now, like the other images, uh, other videos, I took this image and I opened up the cliffs in the background a little bit, tiny bit dark. So I'm going to go over here to the right and I'm going to click on local masking and I'm going to click on add. We're going to add a basic local mask and we're going to use a brush uh, on the drop down here. You also could use a radial mask or gradient mask, but I'm using a brush. You can see you can affect the size with the radius slider. Softness and opacity, I'll keep at 100. Um, what I want is I could get a little smaller brush with the left bracket key. The right bracket key makes it a little larger. And then I'm just going to brush right here on this cliff. Now you can see that it's putting a red overlay there. Kind of lets me know where I'm brushing, which comes in handy. And you can see it's heavily feathered, which is good. Because I want it to you know look natural. I don't want it to look like I just came in and, um, you know, painted on here. I don't want people to know I did this, basically. Get a smaller brush. I'll hit the left bracket key a couple times. Come up in here. I kind of overspilled over in here. You could go right here to this Erase button. You also could hit, hold in the Alt or Option key. Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And while you hold in that key, you could come in and erase uh, wherever you might have um, overdid your brush stroke. All right, so you could see that I painted, but nothing happened because I didn't move any sliders. I'm just going to move exposure all the way up so you could see what I did. And you could see there. And you could see I missed spots over in here, right? So we'll get those. All right. All right, so really we don't want that. So we're going to bring exposure way down. As a matter of fact, I'll reset it by just double clicking on the slider. We'll open up shadows. I think that would look more natural. And we'll increase saturation back in there too. So that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just go to exposure just a tiny bit. Just like that. So I kind of like that. And I'm pretty much done. We're going to go back up to the tools. And we're going to go to the vignette. And I'm going to finish it off with a darker vignette. I'll move it to the left. And you could roll over, roll open advanced settings by clicking there. And you could do affect the roundness, the feathering. You could add an inner light if you like. I like doing that if I have a strong subject. Uh, to add an inner light, you do is you click the subject. And let's say, just for the sake of argument, that this log right here was the subject and I want to add a light. What you will do is it will recenter the vignette to uh, that area right where I click. So I'll click right now and you can see everything shifted. And then if I add an inner light, it makes that section brighter. You see, kind of draws everyone's attention better into that area. But obviously on this image, I don't want to do that. So we'll reset it, and I'll just do a mount again, like that. And if I do want to add an inner light, I could choose subject and maybe uh, click somewhere towards the middle, maybe the sun itself, and then kind of just brighten up like that, maybe like that. I think that looks pretty good. So that's my edit in Luminar AI. Um, and that's pretty much it, and the series is pretty much done. Although I think I will maybe in a day or two do one more video and I'll process this image using Affinity Photo. There's a small but very enthusiastic fan base of people, of Affinity Photo people. that people that really like Affinity Photo and they'll often email me asking me to do more videos and I really don't do too many on it as you know. They don't get a lot of views generally speaking but the people that like it really like it and they ask me uh, quite often to do videos on it. So I don't want to leave those folks out, even though that video probably won't get too many views. I want to do that video for those folks that really like Affinity Photo. So uh, look for that in the next day or two, and then the series will be totally done. I did mention in the first video that I might process it in Photoshop too, but in Photoshop, I would use Adobe Camera Raw, which of course is part of Photoshop, 
and Adobe Camera Raw is really Lightroom's develop module, so I would come up with pretty much the same edit. So I don't think it's it's you know worth anyone's time to watch that video. So I will do Affinity Photo though. Look for that in the next couple days. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>